moving on to ADSB Exchange Flight Radar. Now this is used for both military and civilian spotters. I'm just going to go through you the um, toolbar at the top and a little bit about what ADSB offers. So up here is how to feed. How to feed basically is people with hardware that will offer their data and allow other people to share uh, their data and see their data on the radar screen. So if you've got hardware, you will um, get portals and then offer to share your data. They have a forum and then they also have up here the Flyer Global Radar View which will go down, you can go there or you can actually click this button here. You can have it desktop or mobile. Other tracking info, you can get custom feeds. You can submit aircraft pictures that you've taken, which will be relevant to the aircraft on the map. Flight history data, data itself, and then about the support of ADSB, and you can contact them and the legal and privacy bits. So down here, gives you a little welcome note about what they uh, actually are all about and also over here is a donation bit the donation bit is always nice um, for people to send in money this will obviously help with going forward and future developments when it comes to software and hardware up here is the currently tracking 8513. That's the amount of aircraft that they are actually tracking at this present time. So let's click this and it should take us to the map. There is the map and as Flight Radar 24, this will have a thing here for advertising. To get rid of it, it says hide in two one seconds and then you can just hide it, there you go. Up here on the left hand side, you can zoom out. And it's not just for the UK, this covers a vast array of areas. This will cover the UK, Europe, there you go. And then it will cover America as well. If you do zoom right the way out, it will take a lot longer to load because there is a lot more aircraft that it is actually tracking so your best bet is try to find the area that you're interested in looking at and then zooming in as you can see it has crashed so all we're going to do is come out of there and then back into it with ADSB there we go and then again, look now it's now it's changed and it's got 10,252 aircraft it's tracking. And if we look over here, we can go to America and let it load up. And in 12 seconds that'll be gone. There we go. So in America, it's tracking aircraft in America for us now. So you have aircraft across the world that use ADSB. So it's a good way of tracking military aircraft that are flying to America and back again. And as you can see, if we just go over here, look at the amount of aircraft that it's actually tracking at the present time. And what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and zoom in. And we're going to try and concentrate just on the UK section. So once again, we'll hide this. And as you can imagine, like I said, it has crashed because the amount of aircraft that it is tracking or trying to find on the radar. So we have zoomed in to the UK only. Because if you, like I said, if you zoom right out, it will crash because there are so many aircraft that it will scan for. So we are going to go down to Heathrow area and then zoom in there's Heathrow just here zoom out a little bit there you go 
So just going to go through what we have here. So here we have zoom in and zoom out. We have a menu bar, which I will go through very shortly. And then we have, I call it the word tag. If you press the word tag, it will highlight aircraft like so. Come back out. Now with ADS-B, you have the options of just um, picking specific um, items that you would like. You can have it just uh, scanning aircraft with the speed, the squawk, uh, the height, certain airlines, whichever you want to do, you can do it. What I would do, I will show you what I would do. Um, this is the best setup I personally believe. So over here you have a layer. You have different screens. As you can see, it's going to be changing. There we go. And then what I tend to do is I tend to have it on the open street, the OSM at the top. And then down here I have it on the TMS, which gives you all the boundaries, the air, the airfield boundaries, etc, etc, etc. But for now, we'll take that off and then we'll zoom in again for you. Over here is an aircraft list of the aircraft it's tracking. And up the top right hand side, there's two arrows. To make it full screen, top arrow, we'll open it up like that. You can click on an aircraft and this will show you its route, like so. If you want to see the data of the aircraft, bottom arrow, it will bring out the data. So what we're gonna do for you, we're gonna zoom in a little bit more. Now, again, like I said, we'll zoom into Heathrow. It's after three o'clock. Now, on previous videos, I explained a little bit about Heathrow. Heathrow changes its runway at three o'clock most days if they're running on two sevens. Today they're using two sevens. This morning they were on two seven right landing. This afternoon they're on two seven left landings. So Heathrow Airport is there. They're landing on two seven left and there's two seven right. So we're gonna zoom out a little bit. They're on approach. So let's pick this one. This one's over Richmond. Coming into Heathrow, it is a Japan Airlines. Up the top here, you have JA7636, uh, J, sorry. That is the aircraft registration number. Then you have its transponder code up here. Japan Airlines, Japan. It's a Boeing 777-346ER. It's altitude. Fortunately, it's not squawking. The most aircraft will squawk a squawk code in the airspaces. What that does, it gives specific airspaces the squawk code for that area. For example, say, Mac Loop will have a certain squawk code, and when we use ADSB, you can put it onto a squawk code, so the aircraft that you'll be picking up will be the aircraft going to Mac Loop, for argument's sake. Down here, you have a, an aircraft list, and it gives you the aircraft again. If we were to do that, you would lose all that information but you would keep the aircraft and its route. So we're gonna zoom out. So as you can see with this aircraft here, you can see the route it's been taken. It started out, it comes round, and then it comes into land at Heathrow. Let's move on to the menu page. So the menu page is here. Go to options. Here you can itemize things that you want your ADSB to look how you specifically like it. You can change vertical speeds, altitude types, etc. etc. On the map, you can change the colors, you can change the auto select of the ones that are closest to you or the furthest away. Aircraft, you can change. The registration, the call sign and the altitude, you can choose what aircraft labels you would like. Down on the aircraft list down here, it gives you the altitude aircraft altitude type vertical, the speed, the heading, the bearing, etc. etc. On the list, exactly the same. So this bit here is for here, this bit here is for down here. Filters. This is where you can change what you would like to see. So 
If you just want to see aircraft squawking certain codes, what you would do is you would type in the filters. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So you'd end up with a page like this. Find which one you want. So if I present score codes, add the filter, type in the score code. I will go through this in other videos on what score codes are and when it's best to use them. So for military, what we can do is you can find military, add the filter, enable the filter, and then hypothetically what should happen is only military aircraft will show. So what we'll do, we'll come out, zoom out a little bit, and there we are. Now in my luck, I would probably pick the quietest day to show any kind of military aircraft on a radar but we do have two so there's an Apache ZJ181 Army Air Corps from United Kingdom Augustus Apache AH1 2250 foot so that tells me that's at Watersham and that's the transponder code up there so let's look around what else have we got down there we have another Apache down at Salisbury Plain and then we have all of these helicopters over here, which will probably be, yep, they're the helicopters out of Shawbury. And then we, yep, so these are all based at Shawbury. Over here we have a Thenham. And then we have a Typhoon, Coningsby, Barkton Heath. Uh, no, that's a Spitfire. So there's a Spitfire out of Coningsby. Then a Grob. More Grobs. And then down the bottom here, we do have a C-130. So it just shows you military side of things. And they're all down here as well. So there's all the aircraft that have been tracked at the moment. So this is for the UK. If we were to go over to Europe, like I said, it does work elsewhere. So you could track this aircraft. So that's a C-17 from the United States Air Force. That's probably just come out of Ramstein in Germany. And it's at 28,000 feet. Now, sometimes aircraft out of Ramstein will pop into Mildenhall over this way. So, if you were at Mildenhall, you could track this aircraft and you could, uh, round about this area here, see if it's descending, you would know if that was going into Mildenhall. But this is the reason why flight radars are absolutely fantastic because you could be at Heathrow again if you receive a civilian spotter, you could be at Heathrow on the two seven lefts watching them land, realise there's a certain aircraft you want to see to part, drive around or get around the other side of the runway to see that to part. It's a fantastic tool to give you heads up on what's going on. Again, you can put the layers on. And there we go. So this shows you, that's at Watersham. And the Apache is doing circuits around Watersham. So it's taken off gone around, coming back in. Fantastic tool, and it's a brilliant bit of kit that you will need whenever you go out, whether it's gonna be civilian or military. That is the ADSB Exchange. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more tuitions of what I'm doing, please do subscribe, please do comment below. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much.